For provocative stuff that I think you should know, check out the Justin Hall Show! Hi, I'm Justin Hall. I'm standing here in Berlin, Germany. I know so many people who've been drawn to Berlin by the arts, by the cheap rent, by the open space, the sense of possibility. When I knew I'd be in Berlin, I posted on Facebook asking for folks I should meet and things I should do. I didn't purchase any international data for my US mobile phone, so I could only make plans when I had Wi-Fi. Each day I went out into Berlin and joined whatever conversation I could find. I was fortunate to end up at Holes Market 25, including a garden with a fire pit and a building made entirely of windows. There, I fell in with a number of performance artists. I'm actually this Austrian-Mexican hybrid. And as an Austrian-Mexican hybrid, you definitely have to go to Berlin. This moment that we're in culturally, that's, that we're experiencing this kind of mashup culture, I feel like in Berlin you experience this in a macro-environmental way, that there's architectural mashup, that there's ethnic cultural mashup, that there's political mashup, and, and you're living in that. It's a city in the middle of Europe with so many different cultures that have come together. Ten years ago, I met this guy, Joao, on Flickr. He was a friendly commenter and participant, so I gave him a complimentary Flickr account I had. Joao said that helped nurture his love of photography, and today he has a company in Berlin that prints photographs onto magnets. Joao was very kind to offer me a chance to stay in their offices near Tempelhof. The Magnet Man offices are filled with people speaking Portuguese and Spanish. My first experience of Berlin was filled with immigrants. You can be walking the street, you'll be in an area where everyone's speaking Turkish, you'll be in, on the street there, it's all Spanish people or just English, and it's really cosmopolitan. Because it's a city that's not as expensive as those other cities, the underground can express itself more fully. Germany is such a regulated country. I mean, Germany, you know, Germans are famous for being just like, you know, Germans, you know, Germans. And, and Berlin, all of a sudden, we weren't like Germans, right? It was, it was this insane, great, you know, this playing field. It was a big playground. The wall fell, and we went over there to East Berlin, and it was enti entirely unclear who owned this building, because it was some Jewish family who was disowned in 45. Then it was owned by the East German government, and then that government was gone. So who the fuck owns this building, right? So, oh, we can go in there and make a club. And then that drew interesting people here that just wanted to, you know, explore boundaries. I think it's a really good city to find your creative voice. Uh, because you have this space to experiment. Saturday night, I caught some performance art at Savvy Contemporary. And then the next morning, I went to church because I like to see how other people organize their religion. Gnade sei mit uns. Friede von Gott, unserem Vater, unserem Herrn Jesus Christus. The church had live translation for visitors, and I got to hear the pastor evoke atrocities in the 20th century. Suddenly this city that had been filled with artists and conversation and immigrants and fun became filled with ghosts. And I found myself just crying on the street as I thought about the dead and the suffering from the last century's wars here. I took my tears to an old power station on the east side of Berlin now a dance club called Berghain. I was dressed like an ordinary traveler protecting himself against the rain and cold, so I wasn't welcome as a guest in this cool club. I turned on my heel instead and went into the sadness I felt, heading for museums about Berlin's dark past. Monuments like this topography of terror behind me might help us understand how a distorted reality could lead a nation of millions to slaughter their neighbors. I was filled with mixed feelings, both excited for Berlin's present and future, but uneasy about Berlin's past. So I was very glad to meet up with an old acquaintance named Felix, who turned out to be the only person I interviewed who was actually born and raised in this city. 
In the 20s, it was one of the biggest cities in the world. Then was World War II, then was the war. You know, like almost like a castrated city, you know. It was like, it was, it was robbed of its lifeblood, you know. They took away all the interesting immigrants, they took away the Jewish people, they took away all the culture. But there was still this, this, this little flame, you know. The delta between what Berlin was in 89 and what it should have been if all these things hadn't happened is huge. And that's exactly what's happening now. It's the, it's the exploration of this delta between where Berlin would be if it hadn't been for World War II and if it hadn't been for the wall. There would be probably 13, 14, 15 million people living here. And when the wall fell, it was just two in West Berlin. The scars of this war are what has made Berlin now a fertile ground for artists and immigrants looking to create a new world for themselves. And what irony that as I stroll through Berlin, I encounter queers and Jews and artists, the type of people the Nazis worked to eradicate. And they've come back to fill Berlin, reclaiming this terrain for street artists demanding love. If you enjoyed Just in Berlin, you may also enjoy Just in Tokyo, a 2002 guidebook to living as a nomad in Japan's crowded capital, available as a free PDF on links.net, my personal website, where you'll also find additional stories, color photographs, and moving pictures. People like you support The Justin Hall Show on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash justin.